so good morning friends today we'll just go through uh, the some of the things which we saw in the previous lecture the previous lecture had the preliminary uh, estimates well uh, actually this is a lecture which we are going to have today in fact the last lecture was on uh, this uh, planning what was with planning and we also had a small uh, demonstration of one of the pretender site visits which i had done so in today's class actually we are going to go through preliminary estimates and approval i am not going to be dealing with sanction of estimates today but we'll just go through prelim preliminary estimates and the approval before i start i'll wish all of you a very happy engineers day so this is the gentleman sir uh, m visveswara yeah whose uh, birthday is being celebrated as engineers day our hexagon block has been renamed after him so basically he was a civil engineer this was this was his portfolio basically he did a lot of work in irrigation and a lot of work in drainage and uh, things like that so always his title mainly his title has been sanitary engineer and he is also the recipient of bharat ratna medal as a civil engineer we have much more chances of getting these honors because we will be touching the lives of human beings more readily than any other person and although the pay may not be good i am sure the civil engineer will have the satisfaction of helping another individual touching their lives okay so as i told earlier today's lecture will be basically the preliminary estimate for work and we'll also be looking at the estimates based on cpwd norms so what is this uh, preliminary estimate or uh, the, what is the procedure for execution of works the execution of works always begins with an estimate the execution of any work begins with an estimate after you do the estimate you will have to get a <coughs> sanction or you'll have to get the permission or the budgetary approval some uh, some of the works do have discretionary uh, i mean some of the works have uh, can be authorized by the engineers using the discretion for instance if suppose a work like you know a pipeline breaks you cannot wait for all the sanctions to come before you start to fix it up by the time the damage might have been too severe so these sort of things are what we call as a discretionary works however other things for instance if suppose you are going to uh, go by uh, if you if you are going to have this you know if you, you would have noticed that all the trees are being cut before a monsoon so that is a planned activity if an engineer is not going to plan such an activity he is going to be having uh, having to face uh, you know like negligence and stuff like that so basically a preliminary estimate is based on these guidelines okay basically you may have a feed estimate what is a feed estimate front end engineering design front end engineering design is normally done for all the works uh, which are being done nowadays in the industrial sector if not for the for the other government sector the full engineering is done before the estimate or the before the call is call for tender is done so the moment if suppose for, uh, in the indian context if suppose you are going to have a job called for the first thing you do is the agency calling for the job will have a tender will have a price for instance if you look at any of the tender notice they'll say calling for works for example construction of houses for uh, for employees value of the work they may put it as say around 20 or 30 crores so now it means you know what is the size or magnitude of the work if suppose it's a if it's a village road sort of thing the cost may not be very high but probably the difficulty involved in it will be more so the engineer or the person who's doing the estimate should have a feel for what he is uh, uh, for what he is going to bid then the other thing is so uh, before that the, the so to give the feel to the person who are going to bid for the job the agency calling for the job will be giving an indicative value 
so the next thing is uh, the moment you are getting a job or you know there, there's a chance of getting a job people go for site visits the moment you go for site visit you will ascertain how difficult or how relatively easy the task is when compared to another task which you have already done so if you are going to look at a place where there are going to be a lot of buried pipelines your cost is going to be very high on the other hand if suppose it's it's just a place where there is a lot of undulation gentle undulations so at the time you know that the cost is going to be mainly for filling so all these sort of things you'll be able to just have a look at the uh, place and uh, get an estimate so the moment a person goes there he is going to report back to his office whether the job is going to be a uh, thing worth taking up so the next thing is the uh, the the contractor is going to get the bid documents he is going to buy the bid documents he is going to study it study the specification study the works which are involved and then he is going to get a detailed bill of quantity for that and for that you will be doing the pricing so this is the way uh, preliminary estimates are done estimates have to be done at each stage first stage is when you are going to give a job to somebody you should know how much it's going to cost you basically it is a cost to you also so you are going to ascertain whether it is going to be worth taking up such a project or whether you are going to just let uh, let it lapse till you really need it or you can delay it and stuff like that so for this you need to have an estimate from the buyer, buyer side then when you are bidding for a job you should know whether you will be able to meet the cost expectation of the person who is buying because end of the day if your cost is prohibitory the buyer is not going to be interested in your product then uh, so th so this is what you do first you go and see the place see whether it's worth doing the job and the next thing you do is you do a detailed study and then find out whether the cost you uh, estimated by just looking at it matches your uh, matches the actuals so it's just that you know whether your gut feeling was right or whether your gut feeling was wrong normally what happens if your gut feeling is wrong people will prefer not to take such a job okay there is yet another type of estimate which is being done in government agencies okay this is estimate for the release of funds what do you mean by release of funds see in uh, uh, where there was one particular work of importance to the state which was being undertaken and uh, those assistant engineers were doing some courses with us so they will be crying they will be telling sir this contractor is a useless fellow he is not uh, doing the work the problem the problem for the agency is they'll ask the government to release funds so they'll budget funds for the quarter okay for every 3 months they'll have to have a budget prepared so they'll say sir i'm going to finish 10 crore of work but if the contractor is not billing the government what happens the 10 crore is uh, going to be with him and he'll have to return it to the treasury he'll have to return it with an explanation he'll have to explain why he is not used up the funds this is one of the things which most of the people find it very difficult because what happens is the moment you return the funds the next time he is going to ask for funds when he when he is asking for funds it's not going to be released so if he is asking for 10 crores they may say i give you only 8 crores or 5 crores so he'll have to uh, he'll have to look at the shortfall so basically this is the estimate which you you will have to do if suppose uh, some of you are going to get into the government services you will have to estimate how much work your contractor is likely to finish so he may say, you may say he is going to finish say about 30% of the work if it is a staged payment so immediately you will see what is the total amount and take 30% of the funds and keep it with you so the moment the bill comes to you you can sign it and make the payment the other thing is uh, the contractor's track record is very is something which influences or which will influence your decision so this contractor has been doing a very good job he is going to exceed the target so i better take more money so this things like this are thought of and another thing is uh, there uh, the funds are usually allocated for each uh, work so if you look at if you look at the minister the central budget or the 
uh, or the state budget, they'll say for developing roads, I'm going to uh, allocate so many crores of rupees. So of that um, amount, it will be divided among the states, or probably to be divided among the districts. And at the end of the day, they will be able to take a call. They'll be able to take a call in the sense they'll be saying, okay, I'm going to allocate this much. How much of this money will you, will you be able to use up? So because funds are something which is, or resources are very precious, allocating of resources have to be done very carefully. So this is what we mean by department fund sanction and priority accorded for the task. Okay, for instance, uh, uh, if suppose they are saying that flood relief is going to be done, can you wait for the 10-year plan to be complete? You have to do it immediately. Roads have to be redone. So the moment funds are uh, sanctioned, you will have to do it. So this is what we mean by priority to a task. So what are the types of estimates or where are estimates being done? This is, uh, this is taken right out of CPWD. In fact, this is in the first, uh, within the first five pages. Within the first five pages of the CPWD Works Manual 2014 that you will find this. So these are the areas where you will be doing estimates. When new con uh, constructions are to be done, you will have to get an estimate. Alterations. And in fact, if you see almost all the things which are listed in this slide are what you will ever do in your career. So almost everything requires an estimate and every item you do uh, before you execute will also require a sanction, will also require a sanction. And uh, yeah, so how can we do these estimates? So first and foremost, you will have to know for what you are going to do the estimate. For instance, if you are starting a, if you are going to do a workshop, you are going to find out whether your workshop requires a crane or not. For example, look at the CDMM building. There is a gantry crane provided. So the first thing you have to do is you have to estimate the maximum capacity you feel the gantry crane is going to carry. Okay, there is no point in putting a 100 ton crane here because if you put a 100 ton crane here, you are going to st uh, strengthen the columns. The cost of the equipment is also very high. Over and above that, you will have to strengthen the columns, the foundations and all these things which you could have put in a better way. So the ideal or the optimum equipment which is required for a project has to be estimated. For instance, if you are going to do a power plant, you will have to know what is the wattage you require or what is the power you intend to generate and then you will have to look at the uh, area available. You have to identify a suitable area and all these things and other facilities which are required like for example, the power plant aside, you will have to have a very big staff quarters. Okay, the staff quarters is very uh, much required for the successful running of a power plant. You cannot have your engineers running for very long distances in the event of emergencies. So we need to uh, not only ascertain the equipment, we need to understand the facilities required and what is, uh, I mean like if uh, if you look at, uh, for instance, the, re, la, the latest IIT is going to be done in uh, Darwad, Karnataka. Mysore, Bangalore and all were ignored. They went to Darwad. So why do you think they would have gone to Darwad? It's, it is a, see the thing is they told, the idea was it is well connected by railroads and everything. It's having industries and because it's established there, development is going to be faster. So this is one of, these are some of the reasons why Darwad was chosen over other areas. So now if you look at it, uh, the cost of establishing an IIT in Darwad is going to be much cheaper, right? You're going to have enough land uh, or maybe even abundance of land in Darwad when compared to Bangalore or Mysore. So such things can be applied for even for each and every step of your project. Then the second uh, thing is you have to use the correct schedule of rates. What is the schedule of rates? Rates have been developed for each item of work and each material. So, uh, so th this is this is revised on an annual basis based on all the other factors which we are seeing. Like you know, we were talking about the cost being linked to cost of oil and lubricants, petrol, oil and lubricants. So stuff like that. Uh, the U.S. dollar rate. So all these things will influence the uh, schedule of rates. So once you know that, you will multiply that with your quantity. So much of concrete is required, 
cost of concrete is this much multiply the two values get the cost so this is the this is the basic thing about the uh, and one more thing is the schedule of rates depends on the company or agency for which the work is being done each company will have its own schedule of rates for each region okay and also another thing you can do is you can call for quotes you can call for quotations so i want to i am going to do a power plant if you give me your quote and if i find your quote good i will give your name as the preferred supplier so when you give a call like that so probably kiralaska comments and all these fellows will start to give their quotes arise so what is the uh, motivation for any of these big companies to give a quote for a generator which may not be bought so when uh, when you are calling for a quote you can identify vendors and say give me your quote once you get your quotes you will be able to see the cost of equipment which is going to be used finally you can include uh, the cost or uh, rates in your uh, estimate for permissions and approvals so normally suppose you are going to get the approval done by yourself you will still have to get a get a estimate but in your estimate for the cost of the job you can ignore or add it and one of the things you do in an estimate is you may keep the cost of the uh, overheads of the calling party built into the cost so for example your 500 crores might include cost of profits that means you will say i'm i'm not going to let the contractor make more than 10% of 15% of profit so this is this is i'm putting a cap maybe they'll put 15 to 20% 10% is very less so 15 to 20% they might put a cap so the moment uh, the contractor sees the cost he may not know whether the profits involved or not but he'll just give his quote so the moment he, uh, the people see the quote they will understand whether his profit margin is too high or whether he is doing it at a reasonable rate so these are some of the reasons why you put your uh, include or exclude your contractors profits and overheads so uh, with this i'll just come to uh, i'll uh, i'll close this is the reference which uh, i used for cpwd uh, whenever i'm re uh, i'm uh, referring to cpwd if you look at estimates they got estimates for all sorts of work including rent okay for buying furniture what is the procedure for uh, for for everything so what is the power to sanction and all these things and uh, while i may not be interested to know what is the uh, what is the power to power of a assistant engineer to sanction i will be interested to know what are the things he is eligible to sanction okay so please look at it from that light because today 50000 might be or 2 lakhs might be his uh, his uh, discretionary power budget however as the days go that will change but what he does is not going to 